private attorney, and I'm licensed to practice in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and a bunch of other places. And I'm calling because I'm not afraid of this bill because I don't understand it. I understand it perfectly, and I'm terrified of it. I think whoever drafted it clearly didn't understand anything about New Hampshire law, let alone federal firearms law. There are more defects in here than the committee has time to listen to. I hope you're going to ITL this bill, but if you're not going to, I'm a working attorney and I'm happy to come to your work sessions and help you through this and hope you do, hopefully convince you that you do need to ITL the bill and I'll pass out cards so you'll have my number. I think it's important when you look at this bill, probably one of the most egregious ones without going to, into the mechanics of what's wrong with the bill that everyone else has talked about, is on page three, it's 159E2, Roman 2A. And from a federal firearms licensee's attorney's point of view, what this bill is suggesting is that they violate federal law. And I can tell you, if a federal firearms licensee does what it suggests in this paragraph, I would suggest that the next week the ATF would be revoking their license. Because the problem is that what this bill says is if I'm going to sell a firearm and I go into Riley's and they check in my firearm, which means he puts it in his bound book and we're waiting for the buyer to clear, that they're letting me take it back. That's a violation of law every day of the week. I can tell you right now that the ATF reads this and they'd say, oh, that's really nice, but you can't supersede federal law. And so what you're doing is essentially being an accessory before the fact the federal firearms license is violating federal law. It's not a good thing. But as we go through the bill more and more and more, we look at many other provisions where whoever drafted this simply doesn't have a rudimentary knowledge of federal law. And they certainly don't know anything about firearms and how firearms are used by people. What this bill does is make a firearm a uniquely personal object, which it actually treats it essentially like what's called class three firearms, which are um, fully automatic firearms, and suppressors and everything else. That's a, a, a fact, basically, of what's happening here. And more importantly, they're treating frames. Frames are included here. There's a lot of other things when you actually read what's included here that really will surprise you. And it, it would just destroy the fabric of New Hampshire. Um, Massachusetts has one of the most egregious gun laws in the country. It doesn't even do this. They have an FA-10 form that you voluntarily fill out within 10 days of selling firearms in a private sale. But to say that our laws would be more draconian than Massachusetts, can't even believe it. And I can happily answer all sorts of questions for the committee about mechanics, you know, or, or anything about how the bill would be implemented. And like I said, I'll give you cards with numbers on it. So I really am happy to come to your working group. Thank you. Um, there will be a subcommittee, and we will have to go through this bill relatively quickly in order for it to go to the House and. Uh, on to the criminal justice uh, committee if it gets that far. So I suspect that uh, within the next week we'll have a, we'll have a subcommittee meeting and uh, that will be posted. So uh, just keep an eye on the bill. Thank you.